History Month. My name is Nicole. And I'm Kia, and we are the co owners of Glam Marina. Glam Marina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired active wear, intentionally designed to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space in health and wellness where every body belongs. Yes. Welcome to Behind Glam Marina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss being successful Black women entrepreneurs, working nine to five jobs, motherhood, self-care and everything in between. Yes. And before we dive into today's episode, each episode, we want to do a mental health check in so we can check on each other, see how we're doing. And we want you guys to do the same thing every day. So, Kia, how are you feeling today? Where are you with your mental health? Yes. Like I always say, I love mental health check-ins. I think that's important to kick off any meeting or uh, gathering. Um, How am I feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I can't really complain. You know, I've had a stressful job before in terms of teaching in a a certain classroom um, the past two years. And this year I have a new position. So it hasn't been as stressful. You know, working with kids is tough, being a mom, all that. But um, I just feel I feel pretty good, like not super excited about anything, but um, just happy that work is is uh, is going a little bit better for me this year. Yeah. Nicole, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm OK. <laughs> I'm OK. I feel like like most of us, our, our mental health from week to week is probably going to vary. It's probably going to definitely be up one week, down one week. But definitely. I'm blessed. I'll say that I'm blessed. I'm working through whatever life is thrown at me. And for that, I'm grateful that I'm able to stay sane and get through these situations. So I'm not the best, but also I know people are doing much worse. So for that, I'm grateful. And I'm I'm just holding on to that as I get through, you know, tough situations. Yes, definitely. Like you said, our our uh, mental health check in <laughs> one week it's gonna be like oh, I feel wonderful. The next week I'm stressed. That's just life, right? Um, all right. Well, in today's episode of Behind Glam Marina, Moms on a Mission, we want to talk about motherhood. Nicole and I are both mothers. Um, my daughter is eight, and your daughter Nyla is um, she's turning. 10. She's okay. 10. Mm-hmm. Wow. She's so she's turning eleven this year. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Time flies so fast. So fast. Yes. Um, so in this episode, we're going to talk about motherhood and specifically we, we want to touch a little bit on mom burnout. Um, I'm sure that, you know, there's different names, mom stress, I'm stressed out. Um, I'm burnt out, what, what have you, but we want to talk about something called mom burnout, what it's like being a mother working full time, running full time businesses. So many of us do that. And just that feeling that you have at the end of the day or the end of the week where maybe it's like, I just can't take it anymore. That mom burnout. So we want to touch a little bit about that today. Yeah. Right. And and it's just important to try to find that work-life balance. Like that's how we're going to be able to maintain our mental health. The, you know, the struggles we go through is normal. We're human, but as mothers, as you know, women working nine to five jobs and on top of that, trying to run a business like it's not easy and i think this episode will really help a lot of people or at least get people through whatever they're going through to know that they're not alone in in this mom burnout that we all experience yes definitely so um what is mom burnout that we're talking about we found this article from a website called choosingtherapy.com and it says mom burnout is often characterized by the chronic stress and exhaustion related to relentless caregiving demands. And this epidemic is exceedingly high in women who have full-time careers are or are without a co-parent. Mom burnout can lead mothers to feel ineffective and lacking confidence as parents while simultaneously experience the pool to be a better parent amidst feelings of disconnect with their children. So it's kind of a lot, but what I... What I'm looking at is uh, chronic stress and exhaustion. And um, 
because of the relentless caregiving demands. I mean, that's if when you have children, that's what's happening, right? It's um your child constantly needs. Now, obviously, I think as our children get older, um, I don't think the demands are less. I think they're different, you know, because they become a little bit more independent. So it's not so much help me in the bathroom, but it's it's still there's still demands there as a parent. So that's what mom burnout is, according to this website. Nicole, what do you think? What's um you want to share a little bit about your experience as a mom? Yeah, and I, I think like it's interesting that you were talking about how it changes as your kid gets older because I used to, you know, be like, uh, you know, when she gets older, she I don't have to do as much for her, right? She's more independent, like you said. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but now, now that my daughter is older, like I had that phase of like, okay, it's calmed down a little bit. She can get herself ready for school and this and that. So it gives me more time. Right. Mm-hmm. Less burnout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding now that like, my daughter will be going to middle school in, in the fall. Mm. And it's a lot like one. She's I'm trying to make sure her mental health is good. She's scared of the world. Right. She's thinking about death a lot. I'm trying to figure out how to um, with everything going on in the world. She was sixth wow. grade. They just bought a gun to school. So it's just like she's stressed over that. So trying to figure out how to help her cope. And then girls i didn't know girls were this messy at such an age so i mean friend girl friend groups and girls leaving her out of out of stuff and drama and i just didn't expect it to come so soon so although she can physically do a lot for herself now we still have to be there to mentally and emotionally support them as they go through adolescence and so that part is is it's not physically draining for me anymore but it's it's heavy on my mental cuz as a parent as a mother you want to be a nurturer. You want to do everything you can, right. but some things are beyond your control and you just got to, you know, get through it as best you can. So, yeah. I mean, that on top of work, on top of trying to, you know, it's it's a lot. So mm-hmm. it is, it, it gets different, but I don't, I don't know if it gets easier. <laughs> <laughs> right. That responsibility, that demand. I mean, I, I, I can, I definitely understand that. So me as a teacher, um, you know, I've been around children of different ages, specifically elementary school, but I uh, I used to sub in middle school and high school. I definitely have an understanding, but it's still not until you live it in yeah. terms of um, the demands. I feel like that kids have now it's different. I mean, like our parents tell us, you know, times have changed and I feel and find myself saying that to my daughter, just like, gosh, I mean, things are different. I didn't have uh, cell phones, the, the battle with the cell phone. Um, and, you know, luckily my daughter's eight. So she's not really on social media like that just yet, but I'm dreading that. So, mm-hmm. um, it's, uh, it's a lot being, a parent, um, regardless, I have found if you're married, if you have, you know, someone, a partner in the home, or if you are co-parenting like my situation, um, or you're a single mom, I mean, it's just challenging. It's for mothers, not to say that it's not challenging for fathers also, mm-hmm. but I feel like we all know, <laughs> mm-hmm. at least in our community, uh, uh, the bulk of responsibility is, um, really heavily put on, the moms in the house. So it's, it's quite a lot. And I know just with my experience, you know, my daughter, um, she enjoys school. She loves it, but she's doing great in school. When we get home because it's just her and I right now. Um, I think the lines between being friends (laughs) and being mom and daughter are a little bit blurred at times. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of attitude, a lot of, um, screaming at me slamming the doors and it's interesting though because i can see where my daughter's gotten a lot of that from me uh i've done that before um but i've you know just being a mom in general like i said it's it's really tough i'm dealing with different stuff so like you said it's not it's not worse it's not uh any better but it just changes the level of you know, as our ch- children grow and our, the demand on us, you know, yeah. changes, you know? Yeah. And I like, I like how you pointed out, um, because I know a lot of our listeners may be in different situations when it comes to a relationship, whether you're, like you said, married, single, good co-parenting, mm-hmm. toxic co-parenting, whatever. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really matter. We still have our levels of burnout because the mom on average carries most of the weight. I right. mean, it's that rare case where the dad is on top of everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, 
But it's hard because I think naturally we put a lot of stress on ourselves, even when it's not there. I know me right. personally. I'm like, oh, I got to do this. Gotta do, you know, I'm, I'm always on it. So that just, you know, I don't care if you're, you're married and your, your partner's like, babe, I got it. Sometimes you might be like, no, I got it. And you really mm-hmm. should take it because, mm-hmm. you know, you need that, that time to yourself. But being a mom comes with so many challenges in itself. Mm-hmm. Now add working a job and trying to run a business. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not Girl. careful and you ignore the signs or ignore your health and well-being, it's going to be easy to get burned out. So I think we want to share a few tips on this episode on how to avoid that mommy burnout. So Ki, I don't know if you want to like kind of go back and forth with tips and, and just kind of talk through those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like, um, again, we got this um, some information from a great article coming from choosingtherapy.com. And I like that website just because I have chose therapy. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's I don't believe that was one of their tips on their list. But um, in terms of, you know, just how to uh, avoid mommy burnout. I mean, I don't know if you can really avoid it, but it's in a way, how can we just maybe have less of it? You know, so we don't want um, anyone to feel burnt out all the time. You know what I mean? I feel like burnout is a natural um, feeling and it's just, um, it's just like a natural reaction to so many things that are put on, on our list, right? It's natural to get tired, but there are things that we can do um, to just hopefully help us again, feel less burnt out or um, maybe avoid it, maybe prevent it if, if that's possible. So let's talk about a little bit, a few tips to avoid mommy burnout. The first thing, and I always talk about this is not comparing yourself to other moms and guys, just in general, if we could not compare ourselves to other people, I feel like we would be happier yeah. in this world. However, um, it's it's so easy to do that, right? When you look at other moms, and of course with social media, mm-hmm. and you know, if you see images of other moms and they're just like, oh, they just look good, and they don't look tired. And yeah. I look at myself in the mirror, and I'm like, gosh, I look so tired. Um, it's like that can create even more burnout because you feel this pressure to want it to be a, to look a certain way, yeah. and you're like exhausting yourself trying to make it be a certain way and it might not be that way. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I mean, it's important. I think when it comes to this first tip and not comparing yourself to others, it's be realistic. When you do see a mom who looks like everything is on point, she, you know, just looks so happy and put together. Mm -hmm. Just be realistic and know that we're all human, no matter what it looks like, no matter if it's on social media or you see this one mom at drop off all the time and she just looks She got this nice car. She's smiling. She's, you know, everything is in place. It seems to be like, just be realistic and know that everybody is human. Every, every woman is going through something in their own right or has gone through something to get to where they are. So that's just important to to keep in mind when you are or find yourself Mm -hmm. comparing yourself to somebody else. Just just know like we're human. It's, it's, that's, this woman is not a robot. <laughs> she has she has been through some things regardless of, of the, you know, what you see. So, yeah, I think that's important to remember. I like that. So, so when you are looking at people and if it is like a natural, your first thought is like, oh my gosh, she looks great. Mm-hmm. She looks like she's got it all together. She's got two, three kids or, um, and she just looks put together. You do have to remember that we're all human. And we have no idea what people are going through behind the scene. You know what I mean? You just don't really know they can put um, the best uh, foot forward, but you don't know what she could be dealing with going home or what she could be struggling with. So you just never know. So let's try not to compare ourselves with other moms, all of our mothers out there. Let's try not to compare ourselves to other moms because all of us are going through it. Even if we, you know, fix it up well. Yeah, for sure. So let's go to tip number two. This is something that, I could probably, you know, incorporate. I I don't Mm -hmm. personally do this um, in a sense. So journal to track your mood. So I journal, especially when I'm going through something like we're challenging. I'll just write down how I'm feeling. And then once I know that feeling is gone, I'll go back and read it and write where I'm at, you know, at that point. But this says uh, journal to track your mood. So by breaking down your day in a way that Mm -hmm. allows you to step back and reflect on your accomplishments as well as your areas of imperfection. You're engaging in emotional self-care. 
So this also mm-hmm. might be excellent love that example for your kids. Um, so I like that too. It's it's like you know tracking your mood. It's nothing wrong with that. I've never thought about actually doing that, but I think it's important. Um, it mm-hmm. certainly gives you the opportunity to be mindful, to be a mindful observer of your own life and family dynamics. So this can help prevent burnout. So um, Key, I don't know if you do this. I know I don't, but now I'm interested. Now I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. let me try this. It might be helpful. Yeah, I don't do it often enough. I feel like that's uh, something I struggle with consistency. But people have told me many times that they've journaled, um, regardless of their mother or not. But I like that idea of tracking your mood and trying to figure out like, what are my stressors? What are the things? So if you just take, start with one day, you know what I mean? Um, grab a notebook or a piece of paper. And from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, just write down, you know, your moods throughout the day. And if you can do that for a couple of days, uh, you might be able to look at it and see, you know, like, hmm, around 12 o'clock, I start feeling some type of way or whatever. Like, what's going on? What is, the, is, it, is it like a meeting at the time for me? Am I in a certain class? <laughs> certain students? Um, have I not had lunch? You know what I mean? I think... Yeah what's happening because like you said something about self-care i mean or emotional care Mm -hmm. emotional self-care definitely if we have um something written down that's like this is what's going on with me to help me feel better to help prevent it stop it change it you know what i mean yeah a little bit better yeah yeah and i I guess i kind of do something similar so i don't write it down but i literally have conversations with myself every day Mm -hmm. um and this isn't one of the tips that we have listed but it's like I don't have a lot of friends. I don't like to talk to people about my problems like that. So I find talking to myself, I'm honest with myself and I can actually learn. So I recap, I'm like, okay, this just happened. Where was I wrong? How did it make me feel? And just kind of like doing that on a regular basis. I know what works, what helps me to thrive in life and what kind of sets me back. Like what, what emotionally drained me so bad (laughs) that I couldn't be productive today, that I couldn't do X, Y, Z for, you know, Mm. household or whatever so i think talking to myself is my version of journaling because do you do that throughout the day uh sometimes yeah at, at least once a day uh-huh but literally like at pickup for school i would literally be in the car just literally talking out loud to myself like mm-hmm. why did you do this like what, <laughs> what I, I really do that and it's therapeutic for me like i'm yeah. not, I'm, I'm calm I'm yes. Calm, so. Yeah. I feel like this could be a release too. Cause I feel yeah. like the whole part of journaling is to get it out. Yeah. So journaling, talking it out, making uh, videos, you know, almost video journaling. If you don't want to write, some people are just like, oh, yeah. I don't feel like writing um, yeah, I like or that typing. Too. Yeah. I like but that just too. a little recorder, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired today. Or today's yeah. a good day. You know what I mean? Then you can listen back at yourself and like, hmm, what made it a good day? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So. And I think um a lot of I don't I can't talk to people. I think um sometimes you don't always get a, a neutral advice. You know? Yeah. And so sometimes so I like to block out those outside opinions because I, I don't I know me better than anybody else, right? Especially if right. you're talking to yourself. So right. sometimes the outside world can may not have a positive effect on your emotional health when you're talking to a friend or mm-hmm. somebody else. Yeah, because they could be you. like yeah, absolutely. It could be projecting, uh, you know, it's a, it's a thing. Like if someone's telling you about something that they're going through uh, as a mom and it's like, oh, this is how I handle it. I get it. Sometimes they're just trying to offer, this is what I did for me and it worked so well. But mm-hmm. you might hear it and be like, I can't do that. That's not going to work for me. So mm-hmm. again, it's not that uh, you don't have a friend or something that's trying to, or you don't have good advice. Um, it could just be that that advice is not going to work for you. You yeah. know what I mean? So I like that. I like that idea. I think having some alone time and mm-hmm. we'll get to that part, but having some alone time to talk to yourself and not get that outside influence for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So another uh, tip is planning breaks from being a parent. And I love <laughs> this tip. This is for me, this is like the best thing because um on here, it says, you know, it's perfectly acceptable to need time away for your ch- from your children. And when I read that, I was like, oh, I feel I, I have felt that OK about taking breaks. Again, I co-parent and we're going to talk about that in later episodes, but I co-parent and I have seen some parents um, that aren't away from their children too much. And I like admire them because I'm just like. 
I can't. For me, I have to have some breaks. I definitely enjoy, you know, when my daughter goes to her dad's on the weekends. I miss her. And it's different. It's a different feeling because I always say that like, oh, I can't can't wait to just have the house to myself. But then it's all quiet. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss um I miss spending time with my daughter. So that's, you know, we, we, we love our children here, everybody. It's not that, but the reason why that's important is because it's acceptable to feel like you need to be away from them for a little bit. And how, how can you uh, avoid burnout or try to prevent burnout? If, you know, being a mom is such a large stressor. You can't just be in that stress all the time. You know, yeah. you have to be able to, to step away a bit. Yeah, and and I would like to do that this year. <laughs> yeah, I'm that I'm that mom that's um, I'm that mom that uh, my daughter has been with me twenty four seven for almost eleven years. Um, she doesn't want to be with anybody else, and a part of it is my fault because I I kept her so close at a young age, and so now she doesn't even want to spend the night at either grandmother's house. You know what I mean? She it's hard to get her away. So how can I get the break? If I'm going to the store, she wants to go with me. If I'm going Aww. to a Glamorina meeting, she wants to go with me. So yeah, it's it's hard. Um, so I'm trying to get to that point where making her okay with going away, so that way I get my mommy break. I mean, thankfully I have like dance practice or something. I can have a moment to myself when she's in you know practice or after school. I mean during school, but. I need more of that. So I think that's, yeah. I want that feeling of like, oh, I miss her. And that way you have that break. But when she comes back, you're better. Yes. No, it's you're a better. reset for yourself. Absolutely. It's yeah. a bit of a reset for yourself. So I get that. I definitely, I get that. My daughter's the same. No, not so much every time she wants to go with me, but I feel like you get guilty. Or you feel guilty. You don't get guilty. You feel guilty. That mom guilt of, um, they want to go and it's like, no, you can't go. You can't, especially for um, someone running a business like ourselves. It's like, there are certain events that kids can't go. Cause a lot of times people will tell me, you know, make sure you include your kids. Yes. Yeah. And as Layla's gotten older, I have, I know mm -hmm. you have too with your daughter, um, you know, helping you, you know, sort orders and packaging mm -hmm. stuff. Absolutely. We've introduced our children to our business. But um, they can't go to everything. They can't be a part of everything. Sometimes it's real late or, you know, it's not a situation where children should be there and it's an adult only or what, what have you. Um, and yeah, you feel guilty about that. But um, I, so I feel like take take planning breaks because it says to plan, plan the break, mm -hmm. you know, plan that into your week. When can I have these moments? And you know what? Your breaks don't always have to be you know, weekends or overnight breaks, mm -hmm. you know, you can sit in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm sure we have all done this sit in your car for a few minutes, you know, drink your sip of coffee or your tea or listen to some music yeah. just for a minute. So the breaks can be, you know, 10 minute breaks. You know, I like I mean? that. I like that. That's good. My, it's funny. My old coworker actually talked, we went to happy hour and she was saying how she, this is how she gets her break. Right. So yeah, she has two kids. She leaves her husband with the kids to say she's going to the grocery store. <laughs> and she's and then when she goes to the grocery store, she's gone for hours. And now her husband mm. understands or he knows she's not just yeah. going to the grocery store. She's taking herself out to eat every every week that she's supposed to be going to the grocery store. Mm. She's taking herself out to eat. That's her self care. She's dining mm. herself, but she's just taking that grocery store time to, you know, take herself out and then go to the grocery store and then come back. Yeah, you know? yeah. I love that. So it's, I, I thought that was great. I'm like, I'm just, I'm going to start doing that too. Like take myself out. Yeah. Um, even like you said, if it's just for an hour. Yes. Um, yep. So you have to do that. It's so important. Um, yeah. Ooh, this okay, is so, so far. Oh, sorry. Before you, I just wanted to kind of reiterate where we are mm -hmm. not comparing yourself to other moms again. So we're talking about um, how to avoid or prevent mommy burnout. That's what mm -hmm. this episode is about. So we have some tips. The first one, not comparing yourself to other moms, journaling um, to track your mood. So journaling mm -hmm. how your day is going, planning breaks from being a parent. And Nicole, you want to talk about the next one? Yep. Um, I feel like a lot of moms are eager to do this now. Yeah. So find a mom buddy. I feel like once you get to a point in motherhood, you realize it's so stressful. You need people you can relate to. So that right. mom buddy is going to be somebody who maybe even has a child the same age as you, your child, or um, 
just finding another mom you can relate to experience hear your experiences spending time with that person to mm-hmm. to be able to heal together express your mom burnout together and and that will help mm-hmm. you know aid in in the relieving of that mom burnout i think that's important I'm constantly trying to find moms who are either near me or, you know, we, we already cross paths because I think if, if they're, if it's a mom buddy that is far from you or mm-hmm. y'all don't work nearby, it, it's, that's going to be stressful. Yeah. yeah. Trying to plan. Yeah. Trying, so. uh, you're right. You should meet your mom buddy in person, you know, having mm-hmm. a virtual um, buddy or friend or something is fine, but definitely having that sister mm-hmm. time almost yep. yeah, sitting together. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's important. I think um, it's a lot of upcoming like support groups and like friend groups and mommy groups and things like that to to find yeah. that mom buddy. So trying to trying to figure that out however you can, I think it's important. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I've seen some support groups out there too, for sure. Um, and I haven't really <laughs> I've never signed up for one, but I like this one. I definitely like the idea of having another mom that you can go to. It's like venting, you mm-hmm. know. What I mean, you can sit. And there's no um, expectations. Just you can be yourself and talk about the struggles, you know, and you don't have to wrap it up to make it look nice. Just be honest, like having someone maybe that you can mm-hmm. sit with and just be honest about like, dang, this is what it's like. Um, these are the things that are working or this is the stuff that's like I'm I'm going through right now with my child. And I like it says have a mom buddy, yeah. not just have a friend or girlfriend, mm-hmm. because it makes a difference talking to another woman that has um, children or a child. Yeah. If you are a mom, <laughs> yeah. then it does. Um, you know, it, just talking to someone that has never experienced motherhood, it's a yeah. whole other life. Yeah. It's it's literally another life. Let's be honest. Like, you know, it's they, they, it's not like they can't be supportive or empathetic or, or offer suggestions. But how would they know? <laughs> yeah, they can't relate as much. They, they can try, yeah, but they right. haven't lived it. So, yeah. Yeah. You need somebody that's going to be an, a mom. Yeah. All right. And then uh, to wrap it up in terms of our tips for avoiding mom burnout is moving your body. So that's our last tip. And that's so important. And they not just for mom burnout. I mean, just for relieving stress. Um, This, again, gives you maybe your time alone. A lot of moms use working out regardless of what they do. Meditation, yoga, going to the gym, going for a walk. They use that as like their time away. So you almost hit two birds with one stone. You know what I mean? You uh, prepare or plan for that break from being a mom, but you're also yeah. moving your body. You know what I mean? That exercise, working out. I don't even want to just say exercise, just moving, dancing, something um, that maybe your children aren't around or you could do this with your children, especially yeah. dancing. I do that a lot in, in you know, my home. We dance a lot. We turn on music, uh, take a break from the screens. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But moving your body like definitely feels good. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, especially when it's not... You know, obviously going to the gym and stuff is great, but when it's not, it doesn't seem like you're, it's a job or it's something you're forcing yourself to do. Like, right. dance. um, I said this a couple of times, like me and my daughter will either do, I'll do TikToks with her or we'll play just dance. I love just dance because, you know, it's music. It's, you know, mm-hmm. you follow. Just dance. You, What's that? It's, um, it's a game, video game where you have like the little controller. So you're virtually doing learning dance moves but you're oh, okay. tracking if you're doing it right oh okay um so it's like uh, learning choreography but it's, it's so fun and mm-hmm. they have actually workouts on there too where you could do like a um it's times like they'll do like one that's a 10 minute circuit but it's it's actually just dancing a dance routine and then okay it's fun it's fun but nice. then when you're done you feel good you got the energy to cook dinner you yep. got the energy to help with homework so Mm-hmm. I love that one too. Move your body by any means when you're stressed. Right. Absolutely. Walking, like I said, dancing is a great one because you can do that right at home and it doesn't require a lot of effort because the whole goal here is how can we um, avoid burnout? So we're we're not offering these tips in terms of trying to add more to your to-do list. Mm-hmm. I really want people to take away this information. It's like, how can I incorporate this to what I'm already doing? You know what I mean? In terms of not comparing yourself, that's just a daily progress every day. I think you have to wake up and um, write it down, write it on your mirror, remind yourself that you're a good mom and that as long as you love your children and your children are loved, that's, you know, that's the most important thing. Journaling, 
If you don't have a journal, grab a piece of paper, grab something, a piece of paper and a pencil and just write down sticky note. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's something you can find at home, planning breaks from being a parent. If you're able to um, go into the grocery store or what have you, or if you can't really get away from your kids, like if you're in the house with your children, maybe planning a break of like, I'm just going to go to the bathroom for a little yeah. bit. Some people have, have had to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? You got to, if you have a baby or something, you can't get out, whatever. Um, you don't have any childcare, go to the bathroom, go sit in the closet, take a five, 10 minute break, finding a mom buddy, um, someone that you can sit with, you know what I mean? And then moving your body again, doing something right at home or if we can get out. So these are some tips um, to hopefully help you guys avoid or prevent mommy burnout. And we definitely hope that you guys, again, can take these and just, you know, integrate them into your everyday routine because we know as moms, it's hard out there. And we just want y'all to know we understand. We love you guys. We support y'all. It's... um. We're going to make it. Yes. <laughs> I always like to start with some positive. We're going to make it, mom. Just hang in there. <laughs> yes. Hang in there. Yes. Hang in there. Do what you got to do to avoid burnout by any means necessary. Absolutely. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in today to today's episode of Behind Glamorina Moms on a Mission. We have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Absolutely. Be sure to visit Glamorina.com to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough. Stay well. And until next episode, bye. <laughs>